What is it that you need? Uh, I must have misheard you. I thought you asked me to help you trap a dragon in my palace. I'm sorry, but I can't do it. We'll just have to keep fighting the dragons as best we can. According to legend, although I never thought to put the tale to the test, Jarl Olaf One-Eye it was, who later became High King. They say he shouted it into submission in single combat atop Mount Anthor, and brought it back to Whiterun. Numenex was the dragon's name. That's his skull decorating the main hall. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a city to keep. Threat of war on my doorstep? Speak your mind. What you're asking for is insane. Impossible. You want me to let a dragon into the heart of my city? With the threat of war on my doorstep? There must be another way. The risk is too great. Alduin, the world eater himself. But how can we fight him? Doesn't his return mean it's the end times? I didn't say anything about giving up. Now what's this nonsense about trapping a dragon in my palace? I want to help you, Dragonborn. And I will. But I need your help first. Ulfric and General Tullius are both just waiting for me to make a wrong move. Do you think they will sit idle while a dragon is slaughtering my men and burning my city? No. I can't risk weakening the city while we are under the threat of enemy attack. I'm sorry. Then... I would be glad to help you with your mad dragon trapping scheme, but getting both sides to agree to a truce will be difficult at this point. The bitterness has gone too deep. Maybe. Hmm. What of the Greybeards? They are respected by all Nords. High Hrothgar is neutral territory. If the Greybeards were willing to host a peace council, then maybe Ulfric and Tullius would have to listen. I Dragonborn. Maybe you can stop the dragons and this war into the bargain. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a city to keep. Please keep your weapons sheathed in the Jarl's presence. These vampires are becoming a real menace. <laughs> Like a horker! Time takes You there. We're looking for someone in White Run. And we'll pay good money for information. A woman, a foreigner in these lands. Redguard like us. She is likely not using her true name. We will pay for any information regarding her location. We are not welcome here in White Run. So we will be in Rorikstead if you learn anything. We're looking for a fugitive who comes from Hammerfell. A Redguard woman. She may be somewhere in this city. It's none of your concern. All you need to know is that we're paying for information. If that doesn't interest you, feel free to walk away. We will find her eventually. We heard the Dragon Wren shout from here. You defeated him? I feared as much. I thought it was him we saw flying east after your battle. We are not warriors. What is overlooked in the Dragonborn is not permitted to any other followers of the Way of the Voice. You misunderstand our authority. The Greybeards have never involved themselves in political affairs. I see. The dragon will lead you to Alduin, but without the Jarl's help. 
Artanax has made the decision to help you. This is the road we have to walk. Even the Greybeards must bend to the winds of change, it seems. So be it. Tell Ulfric and General Tullius that the Greybeards wish to speak to them. We will see if they still remember us. He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, master of the voice or tongue. Two for a veteran. If it's arms or armor you need, see Baron in Castle Dower. Bloody good blacksmith, I'm that one. I'm telling you, Ulfric's planning an attack on Whiterun. He'd be insane to try. He doesn't have the men. That's not what my scouts report, sir. Every day more join his cause. Riften, Dawnstar, and Winterhold support him. It's not a cause. It's a rebellion. Call it whatever you like, General. The man's going to try to take Whiterun. Jarl Balgruf. Balgruf refuses the Legion's right to garrison troops in his city. On the other hand, he also refuses to acknowledge Ulfric's claim. Well, if he wants to stand outside the protection of the Empire, fine. Let Ulfric pillage his city. General. You people and your damn Jarls. Sir, you can't force a Nord to accept help he hasn't asked for. If Ulfric's making a move for Whiterun, then we need to be there to stop him. Draft another letter with the usual platitudes, but this time share some of your intelligence regarding Ulfric's plans. Embellish if you have to. We'll let it seem like it's his idea. Yes, sir. You Nords and your bloody sense of honor. Sir. Are my men now giving free reign to anyone who wanders into the castle? Do you have some reason to be here, citizen? Have we? Oh, oh, of course. You were at Helgen. One of the prisoners, if I recall correctly. Hadvar's alive. I hope that's true. He's a damn good soldier. But he hasn't reported in yet, so he can't exactly confirm your story. In the meantime, why don't you have a chat with Legate Ricca? I suspect we might have use for someone resourceful like you. Not many survived, Helgen. Besides, I'm sure your being imprisoned was all a terrible misunderstanding. <clears throat> Something to report? You survived Helgen? General Tullius told me what happened. Not many made it out alive. I've got a good feeling about you, and I don't often get good feelings about anything. A warrior knows to trust her gut. I'm not going to go through the normal process with you. I've got a little test lined up. Pass that, and we'll talk about you joining the Legion. The kind that evaluates your usefulness during... duress. I'm sending you to clear out Fort Herogstad. If you survive, you'll pass. If you die, then I'll have no further use for your corpse. The Ancients built many of the fortresses that dot the landscape of Skyrim. Sadly, most have fallen into disrepair, and nearly all have been overrun with bandits or other vagabonds. Fort Haragstad is one of the few that remains mostly intact. We're going to install a garrison there, but first, you're going to clean out the bandits that have moved in. Yes, this is a test. I don't think you're regular militia material. 
I want to see what you're capable of. Good, that's what I want to hear. Now go make it happen, soldier. Sir. our food, you pollute our city with your stink, and you refuse to help the Stormcloaks. We haven't taken a side because it's not our fight. Hey, maybe the reason these Grayskins don't help in the war is because they're Imperial spies. Imperial spies? You can't be serious. Maybe we'll pay you a visit tonight, little spy. We got ways of finding out what you really are. Do you hate the Dark Elves? Are you here to bully us and tell us to leave? You've come to the wrong city, then. Windhelm's a haven of prejudice and narrow thinking, unworthy of one such as you. Nothing new there. Most of the Nords living in Windhelm don't care much for us, but Rolf is the worst by far. He likes to get drunk and walk around the Grey Quarter yelling insults at us in the small hours of the morning. Oh, a real charmer, that one. Some of these Nords will come up with any excuse to despise us. And it isn't just the Dark Elves they hate. They make a target of the Argonians as well. In fact, just about anyone who isn't a Nord is fair game for their bullying. Mm-hmm. What does the dragon... Aldrich won't give us a straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've intercepted couriers from Solitude. The Empire's putting a great deal of pressure on White Run. And what would you have me do? If he's I'm not much us, of a strategist. Against us. Lord Ulfric listens to my counsel all that. the same. They all know that. How long are you going to wait? You think I need to send Bolgraf a stronger message? If by message you mean shoving a sword through his gullet. Taking his city and leaving him in disgrace would make a more powerful statement, don't you think? So we're ready to start this war in earnest then? Soon. I still say you should take them all out like you did dead King Torrig. I spent my life serving towns. I don't plan to stop now, no matter what the Empire says. Our arms. We're ready when you are. Things hinge on Whiterun. If we can take the city without bloodshed, all the better. But if not... The people are behind you. Many, I fear, still need convincing. Then let them die with their false kings. We've been soldiers a long time. We know the price of freedom. But people are still weighing things in their hearts. What's left of Skyrim to wager? They have families to think of. How many of their sons and daughters follow your banner? We are their families. Well put, friend. Tell me, Godmar, why do you fight for me? I'd follow you into the depths of oblivion. You know that. Yes, but why do you fight? If not for me, 
What then? I'll die before elves dictate the fates of men. Are we not one in this? I fight for the men I've held in my arms, dying on foreign soil. I fight for their wives and children whose names I heard whispered in their last breath. I fight for we few who did come home, only to find our country full of strangers wearing familiar faces. I fight for my people. I'm not much of a strategist. Lord Ulfric listens to my counsel all the same. Yet brands them criminals for wanting to rule themselves! I fight so that all the fighting I've already done hasn't been for nothing. I fight because I must. Your words give voice to what we all feel, Ulfric. And that's why you will be High King. But the day words are enough will be the day when soldiers like us are no longer needed. I will gladly retire from the world. Were such a day to dawn. Aye. But in the meantime, we have a war to plan. I remember you. You were at Helgen with us. Come to join the war. Speak with Galmar. He handles the new recruits. I'm sorry to hear that. If you change your mind, speak with Galmar. What does bring you to me? It's about time they turned their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? I have the greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course. And the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But the political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this unless Tullius himself will be there. Alduin, the world eater of song and legend. If that's true, well, it changes the situation, doesn't it? Even Tullius may be forced to talk sense in the face of such a threat. Yes, I'll give Tullius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. again why I'm wasting men chasing after a fairy tale. If Ulfric gets his hand on that crown, it won't be a fairy tale. It'll be a problem. Don't you Nords put any stock in your own traditions? I thought the Moot chose the king. We're backing Elisif. When the Moot meets, they'll do the sensible thing. Not everyone's agreed to the Moot. You've been here long enough to know that Nords aren't always sensible. We follow our hearts. So what? Ulfric gets this crown and then suddenly he's High King? No, it's not as simple as that. But the Jagged Crown would be a potent symbol for his cause to rally around. But if we found it first... And we gave it to Elisif. In the absence of the moot, it would further legitimize her claim. Perhaps. I'm entrusting you with what resources I can spare. But I'm warning you. If this turns out to be a waste of time and men... It won't be a waste. Make sure you take the auxiliary here. You can send her back when you get there and find nothing but old bones and cobwebs. The Stone Fist's no fool. He's found the crown. But we'll get to it first. Welcome back, soldier. I'm glad you made it in one piece. I'll send men to garrison the fort right away. You did well. I'm impressed. 
But before we go any further, it's time for you to officially join the Legion. Speak with General Tullius. He'll administer the oath. In joining the Legion, you'll be taking an oath binding you to the service of the Emperor, and thus to every citizen of the Empire. Are you prepared to make that commitment? I see. Well, the Legion will still be here when you change your mind. Rika believes in you, and I'm starting to see why. Consider this. What greater glory than to serve the Emperor and his citizens here in Skyrim, in these days of greatest need? Changed your mind? Decided you wanted to soldier for the Empire after all. Well then, repeat after me. Upon my honor, I do swear undying loyalty to the Emperor, Titus Mead II. And unwavering obedience to the officers of his great empire. May those above judge me, and those below take me, if I fail in my duty. Long live the Emperor, long live the Empire. Welcome to the Imperial Legion, soldier. Just remember, we take care of our own. Once you're in the Legion, you're in it for life. Speak to Baron. He's normally out by the forge. He'll get you outfitted. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Legate Ricca has a special assignment for you. good we hold the reach. Were the rebels to gain control, the silver mines would give them coin to hire more thugs and expand their violence. The Greybeards? What do those old hermits want with me? Why, there's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. They are getting to be a problem, but I wasn't sent to Skyrim to fight dragons. My job is to quell this rebellion, and I intend to do just that. Dragons or no dragons. I'll be the judge of that. Besides, by all reports, the Stormcloaks are suffering just as much as we are from these dragon attacks. Fair enough. We're driving the Stormcloaks back well enough at the moment, but we're already overstretched. That's what comes of trying to win a war with a bare handful of legions. If the Ember would just give me the reinforcements I've requested. Most of the legion is tied down on the border with the Aldmeri Dominion. The Emperor can't afford to risk weakening Cyrodiil's defenses. From the Imperial City, our war here is just a sideshow. An interlude before the main event against the Dalmor resumes. Yes, yes, fine, I'll come to this Greybeard Council, for all the good it will do. Done it. The men of violence are gathered here, in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. And I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. 
Peace? <laughs> I doubt it. They may put their weapons down for a moment, but only to gather strength for the next bloodletting. They are not yet tired of war. Far from it. Do you know the ancient Nord word for war? Season unending. And so it has proved. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. So, Arngear, is it? You know why we're here. Are you going to let us in or not? You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. We have as much right to be at this council as all of you. More, actually, since we were the ones that put the Dragonborn on this path. Where are you? Hubris of the Blades truly knows no bounds. Delphine, we're not here to rehearse your grudges. The matter at hand is urgent. Aldwin must be stopped. You wouldn't have called this council if you didn't agree. We know a great deal about the situation and the threat that Aldwin poses to us all. You need us here if you want this council to succeed. Ah, uh, very well. You may enter. I'm glad I finally got a chance to see this place. I'm here because it's required of me. But there's nothing to be gained by talking to that murderer. I've got your back. Let's get going, huh? Take Is everyone here? Let's get this started. If you can arrange an end to the fighting, Dragon's Reach is at your disposal. We all wait upon you, Dragonborn. And so we meet again. But this time I know who and what you really are. Take your seat and we can begin. We must make them see the danger, Dragonborn. We should get started. Alduin is only getting stronger. Dragonborn? I never thought I'd ever willingly stand in the same room with Tullius again. At least not without a weapon in my hand. Why delay? Uh, please, take your seat. When has any good ever come from talking to the Empire? Take your seat, and we can begin. Now that everyone is here, please take your seats. So we can begin. I hope that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of... you insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? That didn't take long. Diplomat. Here, here. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. What do you think? Are we going to let Alfric dictate terms to us before the negotiations even start? I'm glad we see eye to eye on this. We walk then. No, we'll stay. Out of respect for the Dragonborn and our Greybeard hosts. But she is to observe nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Alfric, why so hostile? 
After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side? You know exactly. No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the dragon menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't be We're able to here resist. To arrange a temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? Yes, let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar, and do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markar. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, I'll this is this. outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Markarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely what out of character. Want in return? Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough. First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire and deserve a traitor's death. But I, at least, will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. In exchange for Markarth, the source of most of Skyrim silver. Hardly. Rifton seems like a better choice to me. Well fortified, easily resupplied from across Lake Honric, plus all the mead we can drink. I'm glad you agree. I was starting to wonder whose side you were on here. You heard what she said, Ulfric. We've made you a fair offer. Are you serious about these talks, or are you just here to posture? I expected better from you, Dragonborn. I came here in good faith, despite your known Imperial sympathies. As for you, General Tullius, I see now that Garmar was right. Talking to the Empire is just as useless as ever. If you think you can hold Markarth, you're as deluded as your Emperor when he signed away our freedom to the Thalmor. Skyrim will never again bow to your false empire. Let's go, Galmar. I should have listened to you in the first place. You always were a fool, Ulfric. You're no better at diplomacy than you are in the battlefield. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreement? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphi? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the world eater. Even now, he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful 
with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? A very pretty speech. But what does it Shut have up. to do with that? If he's right about Alvin, we both have just as much to lose here, Tullius. Remember that. Now, back to the matter at hand. Don't hand me a mug of sheep's piss and call it meat. These terms are still not acceptable. I'm sure you have something in mind. Damn right we do. You surrender Yalmarch to us, and take Ithgrad Raventhorn with you. Surely the Builder will take over as Jarl of Morthal. Where do these demands stop, Ulfric? Do you expect me to surrender all of Skyrim? It seems I have no choice but to let the Dragonborn decide. Although I'm starting to doubt your fairness. What say you, Dragonborn? You treat us fairly. Thank you. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we may have an agreement. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, these are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces, Jarl Igmund will step down, and Thangvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. The Stormcloaks will withdraw from the Rift, allowing Imperial troops unhindered access. Jarl Leila Lawgiver will step down, and Maven Blackbriar will become the Jarl of Riften. Jarl March will be turned over to Ulfric, with Sorli the Builder assuming the Jarl ship. You both agree to this? The Sons of Skyrim will live up to their agreements, <coughs> as long as the Imperials hold to theirs. What about you, Alistair? Are these terms to your liking? Speak up! I'm sure General Tullius is waiting to do your bidding. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Ellison. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Taking control of the Rift was a great victory. Ulfric must be rather nervous with us so close to his doorstep. Come on, Delmar. We have a lot of work to do. Giving up Markarth is a heavy price for this truce, Dragonborn. I hope it was worth it. Jarl Valgruf, I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word, and my men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains, how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all? Well, that's an excellent question. You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, I believe I can be of help here. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Them, an unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the Blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. Ah, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power, shouts. By calling the dragon with a voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon after your victory over Aldrin. I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. Ah, indeed. I'm no master of the voice like these, worthy gentlemen, but it is written here. The scroll. Oda Vin, winged snow hunter, as I read it. There's one more thing we know about.
Parthenax, the dragon that the Greybeards have been protecting for all these years. He needs to die. He deserves to die. And it falls to you to kill him until he's dead. Well, I'm sorry, but we would dishonor our oaths as blades if we continue to help you. Make your choice, Dragonborn. You're either with us or against us. Here's the big picture. He helped Alduin enslave our ancestors. He may have betrayed Alduin in the end, but that makes him worse, not better. We can't afford to give Parthenax the opportunity to betray us in turn and return to his old master. If they had their way, you do nothing but sit up on their mountain with them and the Greybeards are so afraid of power that they won't use it. Do the right thing. Parthenax deserves to die. here today. I don't think the truce will last long, but that will not be on your account. Now you see why I've warned you against them bloodthirsty barbarians. Yes, but understand, during the days of Alduin's rule, all dragons were his allies. There was nothing else they could be. If not for Parthenax, Alduin could not have been overthrown. It was he that first taught men to use the Thum. Ah, you're learning, Dragonborn. Doing nothing can be the wisest choice, although strangely often the most difficult. I trust that you will make the right choice in the end. Listen to the voice that Kinnereth has placed within you. Your path will be clear. The old tales say that he can travel into Sovereign Guard to devour the souls of the dead. You must find out how he does this before he regains his strength and returns. Sky, guard you.